guys, it's Elise, and on today's episode, I'm serving up a delicious recipe for white chocolate and raspberry little cheesecake shooters. Let's get started. Now, as always, I'm going to leave all of your ingredients, conversions, and measurements in the description box below, but you're going to need some cream. So I'm using either a whipping cream or a thickened cream with about a 35% milk fat. I've got some super fine or caster sugar and some frozen raspberries. I've also got some fresh raspberries. They're just gonna be part of our garnish today. You'll need some good quality vanilla essence or vanilla extract, some cream cheese, some white chocolate, some condensed milk, and I'm using gelatin leaves today, but you can also use gelatin powder and I will let you know quantities down below. I've got some fresh mint leaves, a little bit of butter, and any white cookie just crumbled down for the base. I've also got a little bit of tap water and just some containers. I'm serving mine in dessert containers, but you can use little jars or glasses or whatever you've got handy. First up, I'm gonna make my raspberry coolie. So in goes the water and the sugar with your frozen raspberries, and you wanna pop them over a medium heat. Just give them a quick stir through and let them simmer away. Melt your butter now and pour it over your shortbread cookies or your graham crackers, whatever you're using here, and just stir it through. That's gonna make our little sort of a no-bake crunchy biscuit base. Take about two teaspoons for each of your containers, place them in using a spoon, and try not to get any down the side because it'll make your containers look a bit greasy. And then I just took anything sort of blunt, so you can use the end of a pen, I'm using a little fondant rolling pin, and just kind of flatten it down so it's a nice, neat little biscuity base layer. Once your raspberries come to a boil, they're gonna be quite liquidy, so you can turn that heat down so they're just simmering away, and you want them to reduce down to about half the quantity that you started out with. So they'll come quite thick, and they'll be sort of really, really rich and red. Once they're there, you wanna pour them into a strainer, and then I'm just using either a wooden spoon or a spatula to push the raspberry mixture through the strainer, but to leave all of those crunchy seeds in the strainer so that you've got a really nice, smooth, and delicious raspberry coolie. Let your coolie coolie, <laughs> you don't want it to be too hot, so let your coolie cool down. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna show you how to make a really simple white chocolate garnish. With melted compound chocolate here, you just wanna place little dollops all the way along a piece of baking paper or greaseproof paper, and then use the back of a spoon to sort of go in the center and just swipe it out. So you've kind of got like a fat end and then almost like a feathery kind of effect on the other end. Do that all along all of your little garnishes. And then you wanna take either, I've got a little forming mold here, but you can also use something like a paper towel roll cut in half, place the baking paper in and let those set either on the bench or in the fridge. It's time to semi whip some cream. So your biscuit bases are done, your coolie is cooling, your garnishes are setting. Now with your cream, you just wanna semi whip it using a medium speed on an electric mixer, or you can use a whisk and do it by hand. So at this point, you wanna make sure that you definitely don't firmly whip or over whip that cream. You're just looking for a really, really light semi whip so that as you're folding it through that cream cheese mixture, you're not actually going to over whip and curdle your cream. Make sure you keep your whipped cream in the fridge so it doesn't get too warm. And then you wanna take your cream cheese and you just wanna beat it on a medium speed until it's really nice and smooth, so no lumps and bumps. Add in your vanilla essence and also that melted white chocolate. So the melted white chocolate's gonna to help to give stability to your dish. The cream cheese is gonna to help to give stability to the dish and also the whipping of the cream. But this one does call for gelatin so that it's a little bit firmer and a little bit less sort of a wet cheesecake. You can eliminate the gelatin, but it would need to be served in a jar or something because it's not gonna hold up under its own weight. In goes your tin of condensed milk and just add that gradually as you're mixing. And what you should have after about a minute to two minutes of mixing is a really beautiful, smooth, creamy cheesecake mixture. Your cream has still not been added here, so don't be tempted to add it. Now, you want a little bit of boiling water or warm water sitting over a stove top and I soaked my leaves of gelatin in some cold water for about 10 minutes before I want to use them. That's just to moisten them up because they do come dried. Keep that gelatin moving in your little bowl until it's completely melted. Now, once it's completely liquid, you cannot just add it straight into the cheesecake mixture. You need to take about a tablespoon or two tablespoons of that cheesecake mixture, stir it into the gelatin really, really vigorously so it's completely mixed together, and then you wanna pour that gelatin cheesecake mix back into the main cheesecake mix. At this point, you wanna make sure that all of your containers are ready. You have a Ziploc bag at the ready or a piping bag, and your cream is sitting there because you need to work quite quickly before the gelatin starts to set. Add in all of your semi-whipped cream and use your spatula just to fold it through the mix so that it's really well combined, but you definitely don't want to over-whip it here. 
The reason that we do that little trick with the gelatin is if you just pour straight gelatin into a mixture like this, it sinks to the bottom, separates from the mix and doesn't do its job. Now you want to take a Ziploc bag or a piping bag and you're just going to pour that cheesecake mixture into your bag. This is going to make it a bit neater to serve it up. And then I'm just going to snip a generous tip off the end. Now I'm just going to basically pipe in generous amounts of my cheesecake, but you don't want that to come all the way to the top because you need to have enough room for some raspberry coolie and also for your garnish. So bring them up to there about a centimetre or so from the edge of the rim. You want to add about two teaspoons of the raspberry coolie on the top of each of your little cheesecake dessert cups. I found it easiest to actually pot the cheesecakes as they were in the fridge for about 15-20 minutes so that they start to firm up and that way you're not trying to work with just poured cheesecake and wet coolie. It just gives you a bit of a neater line. If you wanted to make these in advance, you can stop here, cover them, pop them in the refrigerator and bring them out and garnish them just prior to serving. So with your garnishes, you've got your beautiful little white chocolate curls that we made so simply, those fresh mint leaves and also your fresh raspberries. You're gonna need one of each of those pieces. The mint is an optional extra, but if you're going to add this, add it right before serving because mint leaves have a tendency to go a little bit black when they sit out in the air for more than about half an hour. On goes your white chocolate curl, your beautiful little fresh mint leaf, and then your fresh raspberry. And you have got yourself a gorgeous white chocolate and raspberry cheesecake dessert to rival any patisserie that you'd walk into. I hope you guys have enjoyed this recipe. I hope you'll make it at home and share it with your friends and family. If you're not already subscribed to My Cupcake Addiction, make sure you do for all things sweets and baking. And as always, thanks very much for tuning in to My Cupcake Addiction. Thank you.